Hey everyone, first off I'd like to apologize for the lack in updates recently. This is partly down to the fact that I have a frankly amazing amount of schoolwork to do, but partially down to the fact that I'm doing a project of sorts at the moment. The project was commissioned by a person whom I'm not sure I have the liberty to disclose the identity of, but I am going to show this video to that person because this is a status update of sorts, a uh, way of telling that person uh, what is done on the project. So for those of you who don't know, what is the project about exactly? Well, let's say you have a website and you have a collection of pictures that you'd like to select one to upload to the website. Unfortunately, because there are so many, they are grouped in folders and you have to find the one folder that contains the pictures you're looking for and then find them uh, in this very long list with no thumbnails because all of these pictures are on a remote server they're not in this case but they are in the actual production case and then you have to usually you'd have to select uh, each picture and look at it no that's not the one i'm looking for then try to find it again no, that's not what I'm looking for, and repeat this to infinity. And even when you have successfully found a picture you're looking for, you can't directly upload it, because it is of not the correct size. For example, this particular picture has a size of 960 by 540 pixels, but what if your website does not support such large images? What if it only supports, for example, uh, pictures which are only 480 uh, in the horizontal direction? You would have to then uh, open up um, a program that supports this, um, go to scale image or similar, and then scale this image down manually, and that would happen for each picture you're looking at. So that would be quite inconvenient. For this reason, my program uh, lists all of the pictures that are available uh, in thumbnail view uh, and lets you select one that you're looking for. And when you have selected it, uh, it lets you do all of the transformations you need in one button. For example, I like this image, uh, but it is like that other one. Uh, of 960 pixels in the horizontal direction. But let's say that your use case calls for pictures uh, to be 480 pixels in the maximum dimension. Um, unfortunately, there is no easy way of editing this at the moment. You have to go to the source code. Uh, but if you select these parameters uh, and then uh, launch the program, uh, uh, when you select uh, this picture uh, and select prepare for publishing, uh, it just rescaled it and saved it to the output folder. So now, uh, if we look back at the output folder, we have this image here. Uh, and yes, it has been rescaled to 480 in the horizontal. Another limitation that often pops up is not the limitation in the dimensional case, but the limitation to the file size. For example, let's say that the file can be as big as it can be, but it has to be lower than, let's say, 10 kilobytes in size. That is a very small restriction, but uh, just for the sake of demonstration, let's go with this. So. You have this restriction and you want this file again, but it is a 577 kilobytes in size, so that won't do. You'll have to rescale it and you'll have to try and find a rescaling value that will fit the uh, limitation of the file size. And that's what this program will do for you. Uh, it's trying different scaling values until it hits the one 
that makes the file size lower than the required limit, at which point it saves it. And if you go back to the output folder and look at this file, uh, you'll note that it is indeed 9.9 kilobytes in size, which fits our requirement. So at the moment, exactly one half of the project is done. You can see the pictures in thumbnail view and you can process them for the publication that is required for the website. But there's also a requirement uh, for being able to categorize pictures by tags so that you can, uh, for example, say that this picture contains that uh, and basically that's sort of a folder inside this sort of view but not linked to actual file system folders. The other part is the cloud service provider integration because the client is using box.com, not local file system, to manage their pictures, not to manage, sorry, to store them. Well, I don't know much about box.com, but essentially what it is, it's a business-oriented Dropbox. So it essentially has its own file system from which you can get lists of files and folders and that sort of thing. So essentially what I'll have to do uh, is write an interface to box.com uh, to be able to list files uh, independent of where they are stored uh, and also to download pictures. Um, I'm showing you here the code that I have for this. Essentially there are two main functions, uh, get file list uh, which returns a list of files and each file is some object that you can then pass to get image to download that image. Uh, any programmers among you may have noticed that this looks quite simple and for this reason I've abstracted the file system away from the actual implementation. So uh, when I release the project to the public uh, anybody will be able to add their own integrations for their own cloud service providers and whatnot. So this is my status report for today. The project is uh, nearly halfway done and the remaining parts are the box.com integration and the tags.